Level X cards. Who remembers them? Well, before I tell you their story, let's go back to 1996 in Japan with the creation of this new franchise called Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon the movie joins Pokemon the video game and Pokemon the trading card as must-sees and must-haves. And the Pokemon is creating a monster of a commotion for American kids. Video games, anime series, collectible merchandise, trading cards. We are in a world today where it is practically impossible not to know what Pokemon is. However, despite the company's massive popularity, there was a time where there were less trainers, so to speak. For lack of better words, the first generation of Pokemon fans started to dwindle down sometime during Generation 2 of Pokemon. So as a result, for the next 10 or so years, there was less printed Pokemon cards. In fact, it wasn't until the release of the widely popular mobile game Pokemon Go that released on July 6, 2016, that Pokemon brought back a lot of their original audience and fan base, but also brought in a huge new audience to enjoy the ever expanding world of Pokemon. Going back to the end of Generation 2, when Pokemon was starting to have a transition period, there was a new generation of fans that had started their own journey for the very first time, which was because of the releases of Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, or even Fire Red and Leaf Green between 2003 and 2005. Around this time, the beginning of Generation 3, Nintendo took over publishing rights from Wizards of the Coast who had been publishing the Pokemon trading cards ever since 1999 outside of Japan, which albeit was not the smoothest transition. However, this new era gave us our first glimpse of the first true ultra rares of the Pokemon trading card game, the original EX cards. The original EX cards were massively popular for both collectors and competitive players alike. They started off being rather difficult to pull, but over time they became more easily accessible. From the likes of the Pokemon card promo tins and the now very sought after Pokemon Pop series packs which were actually handed out at Pokemon Leagues. Pop packs were basically subsets or kind of like sample packs with only two cards in every pack. However, the EX cards released in pop packs could also be non-holographic. So some may consider the original EX era to be an experimental era of the TCG, but in 2006 in Japan, we were introduced not only to another new generation of Pokemon with Diamond and Pearl, but a brand new type of ultra rare, Pokemon Level X. Like EX cards, Level X cards share a similar holographic border to the overall design, with a very shiny silvery border. However, unlike EX cards, Level X card artwork designs differed by having the featured Pokemon break out of their border giving an almost 3D effect to the card. Also unlike EX cards, when an opponent would knock out your Pokemon Level X, they would not receive two prize cards. Instead, they would only receive one. The last major difference from EX to Level X is evolution. With EX cards, your Pokemon evolve into an EX card unless they were already a basic Pokemon, such as a Legend. Pokemon. However, one very unique feature of level X cards is that, like the name implies, they level up your existing Pokemon. So what does that mean? Well, you were able to use both your existing active Pokemon abilities and attacks as well as the abilities and attacks of the level X card. Being able to use both simultaneously allowed for some very interesting and strategic plays. Some setbacks with this is despite it not being an evolution, you'd have to wait an additional turn to level up your Pokemon. In Japan, we first saw Level X cards debut in the Diamond and Pearl expansion set in 2006. However, they didn't make their way overseas until spring of 2007, releasing on May 23rd. Level X cards were printed in every Diamond and Pearl set and Platinum sets up until the end of 2009, with the last English printed Level X card being Tangrowth Level X from the TCG set Platinum Arceus being card number 99 out of 99. Level X cards were overall popular during this era, but for some they felt that the level up mechanic to be a bit of a gimmick and not being able to claim two prize cards from knockouts was a negative for others. However, many also really enjoyed how the level X cards were being played. In addition, during the Platinum sets we saw SP Pokemon released, which were all basic Pokemon that were owned by trainers from the games. Level X cards proved to be incredibly useful for that meta, powering up already powerful Pokemon with countless different strategies and approaches. After two and a half years we finally saw the dawn of a new type of Ultra your Pokemon card called Prime Cards, as well as Legend Cards from the Heart Gold and Soul Silver era of the TCG, which lasted about one year before the Black and White base set debuted. That mostly summarizes the experience players had with Level X in competitive play. However, what about collectors? During those two and a half years, we saw under 100 released Level X cards, which includes all of the Level X cards released in Diamond and Pearl and Platinum TCG sets, promo variations, and the Japanese exclusives. In Japan, we saw alternate versions of the existing Level X cards, including Garchomp Level X, Porygon Z Level X, Palkia Level X, and Drapion Level X. We also had a special version of Snorlax Level X in Japan that was inside of the exciting Pokemon packs that participated in Domino's restaurant locations, which had a Domino's logo feature on the card. In addition, in Japan, we were also given Pikachu SP Level Level X, which debuted in a promotion set called Advent of Arceus, to tie in with the release of the movie Pokemon Arceus Jewel of Life. There was also a popular misprint era of Dialga GSP Level X from the English release of the Platinum base set, where instead of the fire and psychic weakness and resistance colors being the accurate red and purple we are used to, instead we were greeted with a pale yellow and a light blue in their place. A very unique printing error. 
Today, Pokemon is bigger than it ever has been, and the trading card game is massive, both for collectors and for players alike. With the release of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, there has been a boost in the popularity for Generation 4, both in the video games and for the TCG. However, Level X cards are still more easily obtainable than some other Pokemon cards of the past, but they definitely were the product of a simpler time in the TCG history. Nowadays, we see Pokemon sets have 200 plus cards to collect from, with well over 20 Ultra Rares and Secret Rares to potentially pull. Not that it is a bad thing, in fact, it is far from it, but looking at a time where they were only on average, Average two to the six ultras in a set with about a hundred cards to collect from. It goes to show just how far things have changed. I personally never thought that we would see the Level X cards make a return, but I was very happy to be proven wrong. Because during the 25th anniversary of Pokemon, we saw reprints of both Luxray GL Level X and Garchomp C Level X in the TCG set Celebrations. We also saw a modern day Generation 8 legendary Pokemon, Zacian, be featured as a promo Level X card. Granted, these cards are not playable in competitive play, but seeing Level X cards make a return in this way was truly very special. It brings me hope that maybe one day again we will see the return of the Pokemon Level X card. Thank you for watching.